In February 2022, when Russian tanks rolled down in Ukraine, the West decided to teach Moscow a lesson. It imposed sanctions, spoke about not doing business with Moscow anymore, and asked the world to do the same, especially countries like India. You see, Europe and America lectured India, told it not to buy Russian oil, to stop dealing with Moscow, to be on the right side of history. Yes, those were the exact words they used. But guess what? The same Europe that lectured India is still doing business with Moscow. This report came out in January. It said Europe is still buying over a quarter of diesel imports from Russia. What happened to the pledge of not buying Russian oil? The promises of punishing Moscow by restricting oil imports. Have a look at the numbers. According to S&P data, during the first 18 days of January, Russian diesel exports to the EU, Norway and the UK averaged a total of 448,000 barrels a day. In December 2022, this figure was even greater. That month, Russian diesel exports stood at 663,000 barrels per day. And if I speak of the overall picture, Russian diesel makes up 27% of Europe's total imports during January and December. This graph further tells you the story. Throughout 2022, Europe has bought a steady amount of oil from Russia. The imports dipped in mid-2022, only to pick up again by the end of the year. And what does this tell you? that despite trying to cut back on Russian oil, Europe is still buying more of it than anyone else. And there's even data to back this. According to estimates from the Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air, since the invasion started, Russia has made more than $315 billion in revenue from fossil fuel exports around the world, with nearly half, or around $149 billion, coming from EU countries. The question is, which countries are the top importers of Russian energy? Well, as one might expect, China remains the top buyer. It accounts for 88% of the imports. But do you know who is on the second spot? Germany. That's right. Germany remains the second largest importer of Russian fossil fuels. It has bought fossil fuels worth 66.6 .6 billion since the war started. Turkey comes third. India is on the fourth spot. But after this, all the spots are taken by Western countries. The Netherlands, Italy, Poland, France, Belgium, Hungary, Bulgaria, Slovakia. That is nine out of 12 top importers. They are all European countries. You think that's bad? Then you must look at this report. According to the NGO Greenpeace, France continues to import enriched Russian uranium. In fact, last Monday, a cargo ship arrived at a French port. It unloaded an array of uranium cylinders from Russia. The NGO says this delivery confirms France's dependence on Moscow, especially on its nuclear industry, which is not covered by sanctions. Here's what it said in a statement. This is a new illustration that the French nuclear industry continues to trade uranium with Rosatom, the Russian state nuclear giant. The continuation of this nuclear trade with Russia in times of war is scandalous. Scandalous, it certainly is. What's even worse is that this was the seventh delivery of uranium to France since the war started. The seventh. According to the report, France has received enough uranium to operate its nuclear plants for over a year. Now, what would you call this? Hypocrisy? Betrayal? Or deception? From where we see it, the answer is all three. And it's not just about Russia here, it's also about the climate. Europe also said that it would be ending its dependency on fossil fuels. You remember COP26? It was held in October 2021. In presence were all European leaders and they assembled to acknowledge the urgency of the climate crisis. They set targets for the others, goals to be achieved by 2050. Chief among them was ending coal burning phasing out the world's reliance on coal. 
in a nutshell, Europe pledged to lead the way. It promised to consign coal to history and shift to renewable sources of energy. But ever since the war started, the same Europe is leading the march in the opposite direction. It is conveniently turning back to coal, no questions asked. In late 2022, as many as six European countries reactivated coal-fired power plants. This was to compensate for the loss of Russian gas and to keep the lights on during winter. Germany was the first to do this. In the first week of July, Germany passed a legislation. It allowed coal-fired power plants to be reactivated when the supplies were low. And this will apply till 2024. So Germany plans to use coal power for the next two years. Same with Austria. They had a mothballed coal power station. It was shut in 2020. And last we checked, Austria had fired up its chimneys again. And then we come to the Netherlands. It has activated an energy crisis plan, removed caps on coal power plants, meaning that it has lifted the restrictions on burning coal for energy. It has allowed factories to run on full capacity until 2023. France also is on the list. In November, it restarted a coal power plant, went back to using coal to generate electricity. And this is despite France implementing a zero coal policy in 2021. The UK also plans to join the bandwagon. Last year, the British government asked the coal power plants to be on standby to generate electricity, to be ready to burn coal if asked to do so. Last week, the BBC carried this report. It said emergency coal power plants have become operational once again. So European countries are reopening coal plants. Here's a question. Where will they get the coal from? Last we heard, Europe had pronounced coal mining as catastrophic. It had all but stopped producing coal. So where will they get it from? Where else but from the developing world? The EU has launched a hunt to secure coal supplies. In June 2022 alone, it imported 7.9 million tons of thermal coal. Just for perspective, around the same time in 2021, they got 2 million tons of coal. So this is a four-fold jump. Now have a look at the source. 1.2 million tons of coal came from Colombia, 854,000 tons from South Africa, and 1.1 million tons from Australia. And these are just the big suppliers. Europe is also importing more coal from Indonesia, Mozambique, Namibia, Nigeria. Do you know what will be the impact of these decisions? Emissions are expected to hit record levels. According to analysts, coal imports to the EU will be 43% higher in 2023. And this will release an additional 10 million tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. 10 million tons in one year. Where does this leave their climate goals, their promises to become carbon neutral? The EU is not talking about any of this because running their air conditioners is more important. Now, here's the thing. We know that desperate diseases need desperate remedies. We know that Europe is going through a power crisis due to the war. It needs to keep the lights on. But this was the same argument given by the developing countries. They need power to run their factories. They lack sources of alternative energy. Their economies are more vulnerable to drastic shifts. Their economies are heavily dependent on Russia. Europe had none of it. It remained sanctimonious. It lectured the global south, told them to shut their factories and ration coal, told them to stop doing business with the Russians. And now that Europe is in a fix, it does not think twice before turning to coal, it does not think twice before going back to Russia. They can change the rules while keeping the moral high ground. They can change the goalposts while dictating the rules to the others. This is classic Western hypocrisy. And it's about time that we call it out.